Something every game can use is control rebinding, even if it's just for accessibility or even just allowing people to just rebind their controls so they have more freedom. In this tutorial for Unity, we'll be covering how to do this and the easiest way that I found to do this and how we can actually save it so the settings are, well, saved. Let's dive into it. So the first thing you need is a working Unity project with the new input system enabled. If you don't know how to do this, there's a tutorial you can find right over there where we cover how to get started and with this exact same project. So let's quickly demo what's inside the project. If we hit play, we have a nice circle and the circle, we can move it using the WASD keys. When we press F, we fire. We just log it to the console, it's nothing special, but this is the base where we get started. So how do we get started with control rebinding? First, we go to Window, Package Manager, and then in the top left, you will see Packages Unity Registry. Make sure that's that clicked and not on In Project My Assets or Built-in. Once you're there, just scroll to the, the I from Input System and go to Samples. If you scroll down a bit, you will see Rebinding UI. Click Import. Give Unity like 20 minutes once you're done, we got basically a script that does almost everything for us, but we will need to make some tweaks. So first things first, let's make a little bit of a UI. To add a UI, just right click, go UI, and then Canvas. Unity will automatically make an event system, and we have to make sure that the event system is also using the new input system. So if we click on event system, we should have a big button that now says replace with input system UI input module. Click the button. Now your UI should be set up to use a new input system. On our canvas, you can basically add whatever you want, in the style you want. I created a couple of things to already get started. So I'll drag in my prefabs that I pre-made for the UI, and I'll cover what's inside them. So I added two prefabs. One is for a rebinding, which will represent rebinding one action. For example, if you want to rebind the fire key, this is one entry. Um, you can see I added a text label, this will represent the action that we are trying to rebind and a label called binding. Binding is the button that is assigned for this specific action. The second thing I added is an overlay prefab. If I quickly enable it, you'll see we get basically an overlay and then a text in the middle that says rebinding text. The rebinding text will then give the user's instructions on what he or she has to do. Nothing here is set up yet in code. So how do we get this working? If we go to our rebinding, Click Add Component, we can add the script called Rebind Action UI. And here we have a lot of inputs we need to give. So let's cover them real quick. First things first is the action. This is the thing you actually want to rebind. For example, in our case, let's take the fire action. We can just drag and drop it in and that's it. The next thing is a binding. What's important here is we currently only have keyboard and mouse setup, but if you, for example, would have controller support, like an Xbox 360 controller or something, you could select here that if you want to rebind it for controllers or for example, keyboard and mouse. In our case, since, we, since I just said we only use keyboard and mouse, let's just click that. And you can see the default binding is F, like I told you earlier. Display options, you can play with it. It's basically how Unity will show your fire action. Then we have UI inputs. Important to note here is they are all texts, not text mesh pros. If you want to actually change it into text mesh pro, just go inside the script and change text to text mesh pro where it's used. So action label is basically the action we have, in this case, a fire and the label. So this is the one I said where, hey, this is the preview of what the player wants to rebind. So let's just drag that in. Then the binding text is just the binding. The rebind overlay is a game object you want to show when you actually start rebinding. This is the overlay I mentioned earlier and then the text for the rebind text is also just the one in the overlay. The second thing we need is to actually trigger this code. The easiest way to do this is basically using a button on the component itself. So let's just add a button and then we can do an on-click action where we just go to our rebinding and we call in our rebind action UI a function called start interactive rebind. If we now start Unity up, there will be a couple of things that you will see. First of all, the fire and F, they will be filled in. But it was for me like this already because it was saved like this. But for you, you should see your action label and your action button already assigned. If we click it, you can see we get an error. Unity samples are great. So let's quickly open up the script, make some changes and uh, add the functionality for saving and loading. All right, so now Rider is open, we can start tweaking the script. As you can see, it's a very long script and 
honestly, people think, I, I assume people think this is cleanly written, but I really dislike the style. This is my rant, sorry. <laughs> and as you can see, there are a couple of important things here. First, you can see, like I mentioned, that we use text almost everywhere. If you want to use TextMesh Pro, just replace every instance of the text class with TextMesh Pro and it just should work. Now, if we go back to Unity and you see that the error we had, it's basically complaining that we cannot rebind an action, in this case, the fire action, because it is still enabled. The reason of this is when you're trying to rebind it, Unity can only handle it if it's not the active map. This is often the case though, where you actually want it to be active or you have to switch between the UI or a player control scheme. So how do we fix this? If we go to Rider, there are a couple events that we can actually take care of. So first, remember the method we called, called start interactive rebind. Let's quickly add there a line to disable our input action. So we go m underscore action dot action dot disable. And now it should be disabled. Of course, this is only one part of the pie because we need to enable it once again so we can actually fire the button again. The second thing we need to do is enable it once again. There's a method called void cleanup. This is the perfect method to just add our action enable again. So we go m underscore action dot action dot enable. We hit save and go back to Unity. This should already make our rebinding work. You can see I can still move around. The F key is basically still firing. I click on the button. No errors, I can press V for example for fire. And now you can see in the top left corner, the fire button is rebinded to V. And if I press V, it also refires. There's still one issue. If you restart the game, you can see the button is once again the F key. I assume you don't want your player to always have to configure their settings every time they want to play. So let's quickly cover how we will tackle that as well. Let's go back to Rider in our rebind action UI and just wherever you want, honestly, it's already a mess of a script. You can just add a new lines of code. Let's call it private void icon type. Uh, save control action binding, action binding. In this method, we will basically cover getting the data that we need for the input system, saving it into the player prefs. For those who do not know, player prefs is an easy way to store certain key value based yeah, values. This is by far the easiest way that I think, and it is only specific. It's not a true safe system, but you can use it for settings. That's why I call player prefs, preferences. So in this safe method, we basically want to cover saving uh, our bindings as JSON. So first of all, let's get a reference to our bindings. So how do we do that? We have this line. We have var current bindings. It's the variable you want to name. We have an action reference. This is what the script already provides. We then take in the action and then we try to save the action map as a JSON. So right now in our current bindings, there will be a string, which is a JSON object of every data we need. Next up, we need to save it. You can see writer suggests losing player prefs and then set string and then the bindings. While this is fine, if you have more than one rebinding, that's not ideal. So let's change the key to something more unique. For example, let's take the action dot action dot name and let's just add for example our binding id because like i said if we have for example a controller support and keyboard support we want to make sure the binding is also unique and now we have our save method basically covered of course when we save we also need to load let's create a new method called load action binding so let's create a private void load action binding and in this method, you guessed it, we will actually load the value we just saved. How do we do this? First of all, we get our data back. So you can see autocomplete already suggests it and it is save bindings and we get it from player paths. So we just do player paths dot get string. Then we take our action name again and our binding ID. So now we have this, we basically need to apply these changes back to our object. So autocomplete is once again, very handy. I prepared this, so I guess it knows what I want to type. And that is basically, if we want, we want to check that if we get any saved settings back, then we want to apply them. That's why we do the string is null or empty, because otherwise we might apply empty settings. So how do we load it then? We just do action reference dot action dot action map and then load binding overrides from JSON. And that is our save and loading methods covered. Of course, we still need to invoke them. So we actually do these things. So first thing first, when the script starts, we basically want to run the load because Every time the object is created, we want to see if it is saved. So 
If we do a quick lookup, you can see there is no start method. So we just create our own. So we say private void start, and then we say load action binding. So that is the loading part covered. And then we need to see what is the best time to actually save it. The best time to save it is once again, we can do it in the cleanup method. So let's just call it and say save action binding. If we then go back to Unity, you can see that the V button is still active. So let's change it to R, for example. I can still move around. V doesn't do anything anymore. Press R and the fire method is called. Change it back to B, for example. B does it. And if I restart the game, B is still the way I fire. That is the basic rebinding done. Now let's do another one where we rebind movement because it is a composite. Remember, it uses the W, A, S, D keys to emulate a vector two. So if we go to our rebinding, we can then select our movement as the action, assign our binding once again. You can also choose to just uh, do it with one button. You can only do the up, for example, but in this case, for demo purposes, I will show how to do the composite part because it is a bit different. And then that should be it. We can move it down a bit so it's not overlapping. And we have all our controls laid out. If we now start the game, you can see that the B button is still there and WSD as well. If we click on WSD, it will ask me for an up input. For example, if I want to use the up arrow key, you can see it does it and it changes it in the preview, but it throws an error. That's because we basically only configured it for normal input types. We need to do a little change for the composite part. It is once again the error where it is not enabled. So what we basically need to do is disable the second input. In this case, it was the down key. Uh, the moment we start actually processing it. So you can see in the code, there is a line there. It says, hey, if it's part of a composite, we should uh, initiate a rebind for the next part. And then you can see there is a perform interactive rebind method. Just control click it so you're there. And you can see it's right up top of the cleanup. So let's just quickly disable the action here as well. Action dot disable. And then if we go back to Unity, you can see the movement. We can rebind to up, down, left, right, for example. And now the movement is using those keys as well. And the B button is still firing. And this is how you also rebind a composite. These are the basics to get control rebinding working. Of course, these are only the basics. And if you want to get more in depth, you can do things like adding controller support, making sure those are rebindable as well, in-game hints, and of course, just adding more inputs because we only covered two cases in this video. If that is something you want to see, do let us know in the comments and we might reconsider doing another tutorial, maybe sooner than one year after the previous one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and see you guys in the next one. Bye.